Live. So, hi everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Ana Carvalho. I'm here today, as usual, with Inês Almeida to present you with our R&D sessions by EDP New. We are super happy to have you all here. Welcome back for, from summer vacations and welcome to our 25th edition of the R&D sessions. Uh, for those who don't know, EDP New is the R&D center for EDP. We work on research and development projects on the energy sector. And we work on European projects looking at innovative solutions for the decarbonization, the smartification and flexibility of the energy sector. Uh, since 2020, we've started doing these uh, R&D sessions on a monthly basis. And this is where we get together experts to discuss several topics regarding the future of the energy sector, the challenges that we're facing in this sector, and also the solutions that we are already as EDP uh, putting into practice. Inês. Thank you, Anna. So hi, everyone. Uh, for today's sessions, we have prepared a session dedicated to the topic of ports of the future and how can we contribute for a greener transport sector. Uh, in this regard, we will introduce you some of the R&D solutions that are being developed uh, with the aim of making the transport sector greener and a step closer to decarbonization. Uh, let us remind you that the recording of each webinar is available on our website, so you just need to read the QR code uh, in the slides and you will be able to watch offline any webinar and the different topics we have in R&D. Regarding today's webinar, at the end of the presentations, we will have the Q&A time, so we also want to encourage you to ask questions in the Q&A chat because we have here today the right persons to, to answer you. With no further delays, we welcome you all to this event and wish you all a great session, but not without first introducing you our moderator, uh, João Silva. João Silva holds a master and a PhD degree in electrotechnical and computer engineering from the Faculty of Engineering of the University of Porto. Since 2021, he joined at EPNU as a senior R&D project manager. Currently, he is coordinating uh, at EPNU participating in the H2020 Magpie project. And before this experience, he has worked as a R&D engineer in Center for Power and Energy Systems of Inesctec. During almost seven years, uh, João has collaborated in several EU-funded projects. And back then, his main responsibilities were related with software development and with the technical coordination of demonstration activities. So now, João, please go ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Ines. And thank you, Anna. For the, for the presentation. I hope that you can hear me well. And first of all, of course, I want also to welcome uh, to our entire audience. Uh, in fact, it is interesting that today I am, I am moderating this section because I am in a, a port. In fact, I am exactly in a port in the north of Portugal, that is port of Viana do Castelo, because we had here some, some visits today and I am here um, moderating today, today this session. And uh, following me, our agenda, I will not only be the moderator of today, I will also make a brief introduction about the topic, so ports of the future, and then related with this topic, uh, our two hosts today, our two experts, uh, will present two projects that are deeply associated with this topic of making the ports more efficient, making ports more green, and they are Ryan Will from the Magpie project and Sean White from the Current Direct project, I will still have the opportunity to, to, to present them in more detail. And then to finalize, as Ines already mentioned, we will have our Q&A session that today will be a little bit a mix of questions from the audience. I will also pose some questions to, to our moderators. Um, but of course, we want to, to hear from you, your doubts, your questions. So please uh, feel free to, to, to make every question that you think uh, or any doubt that you have. And wasting no more time. I will start with this brief introduction. And what first I want I want to, to, to talk about it's why we need to make the transport sector greener. And it's not difficult to explain this. In fact, nowadays transport accounts for 25% of the European Union's greenhouse gas emissions. Specifically, the waterborne transport accounts for approximately 13% 
of the European Union transport greenhouse gas emissions. And of course, with these significant numbers, it's 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 not difficult to understand that the road to or the pathway to decarbonize uh, the transport sector already started. And of course, one of, one of the main streams to decarbon to decarbonize the sector is the energy transition. So is 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 to explore new green energy vectors like hydrogen, like the electrification of of the transports. Uh, but uh, this energy transition cannot happen also with uh, a backbone that is the digitalization backbone, because only with solutions that are digitalized, it is possible to have an optimal management of all these new uh, green energy vectors that will uh, necessarily need to or will need to to communicate and to be linked in the future. But it is a challenging process. This this road to decarbonization is a, is a sector that is still very dependent on fossil fuels nowadays. There is not yet a clear picture of which of these uh, new green energy vectors will be, let's say, more suitable uh, to each different transport modality. And of course, there is the, the cost, the cost constraints, because different uh, or new green energy carriers will also involve investments in new infrastructures. And of course, this is a constraint that needs to be taken into account. And now that I presented a little bit why we are focusing on the transport sector, and I would like to emphasize the following, which will then fit uh, our discussion. It's the fact that the seaports and airports can play a major role in changing this scenario. And why, why is this? Let, let me share with you a simple image that will explain this. Seaports, and here is a an example to a seaport, but it would happen the same in, a, in an airport, in fact, is a complex and a multi-stakeholder hub. This means that in a single spot, we have a, a significant diversity of different stakeholders that coexist together. Particularly when we go to the transport modalities that coexist in this ecosystem, we can find several different stakeholders. We have the, the, the vessels that come to the port and transport the cargo to land. Then we have all the different modalities that pick up on this cargo that is transported by vessel and transport it to the interland. And in here, we usually divide this transport modality in three different. So it's the road transport, the rail transport, and also the inland waterway transport. And so um, it's, it's uh, honestly, I, I cannot imagine a, a, a better spot to, to, to start the decarbonization, a spot where all these different modalities coexist together. And of course, understanding this, uh, the commission um, started already a few years ago um, placing some, some funding opportunities. And these two projects that we have here today are the result of these, these funding opportunities. We have the Magpie project and the current direct project. The Magpie project was funded under the Green Deal and in a call that it was to develop or, or to, to ensure that ports and airports will become green, will, be, will become a multimodal hub, sustainable, and that in, and then the, um, promote smart mobility. And the focus of this project is to demonstrate future energy supply solutions to stimulate green, smart, and integrated multimodal transport. About current direct, it was in fact funded before the Magpie project and before the, 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 the Green Deal, but it is already related, it is, uh, it is already related with this part of uh, modalities uh, associated with, with the port ecosystem being decarbonized. And in this project, it is going to be demonstrated an innovative lithium ion cell engineered for waterborne transport. And now to finalize my intervention, I just want to explain to you why we joined these two projects today. Because in fact, there is a link, not only that is related with ports, but we have, um, uh, let's say, an even, an even significant uh, link between two projects. The Magpie project focuses in, in all the different transport modalities that coexist in the port ecosystem. You can see here the maritime shipping, here the, the images for the non-shore power supply uh, to a vessel. We are also going to demonstrate um, uh, the shift from diesel shunting locomotives to a hybrid shunting locomotive. Also, electrified solutions to trucks will be demonstrated, but it is missing here one transport modality that is also associated, also studied in the Magpie project, that is the inland shipping. And it is, is in fact here that we have the correlation, because the current direct project goes deeper on a technology 
that can allow that this type of transport becomes green. And as you can see here, this is the solution that is being developed in the current direct product. It's a swappable water bond transport battery, which uh, will not only um, which will not only be developed to power the vessels, but will also then the barges, sorry, but will also then be managed and optimally managed through an energy um, as a as a platform, energy as a service platform, sorry. And um, I will of course leave the, the details to our two experts today. So I will move I will move to to their presentation. Let me let me here go to advance here on the slide. So now we will have Ryer, Ryer Will from the Port of Rotterdam. Uh, he is going to present the Magpa project. Uh, Ryer is a, is a project manager at the Port of Rotterdam, a senior executive with significant experience in the realization of infrastructure works, namely on ports, airports, bridges and tunnels. He has been involved in over 30 port and terminal development projects worldwide, and he is currently the, the, as I was mentioning, the Magpie project manager. So, Ryer, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for being here today, and you can you can share your presentation. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> thank you, Xiao. Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving this opportunity that we uh, we can present uh, ourselves as the uh, the Magpie project, um, and of course also as the uh, uh, the Port of Rotterdam uh, as being a, a partner and the, the coordinator of uh, of the project. Let me just quickly start sharing my screen. Now with me on it, yes. A short introduction indeed, uh, maybe on first of all Magpie. Um, uh, as we developed the project and we wanted to uh, have an acronym for the for the project, as is quite common for, of course, EU projects, uh, we came, well, we wanted to have a link, of course, also with nature. And we came up with the uh, smart green ports as integrated efficient uh, multimodal hubs, uh, which uh, the acronym is MAGPI, uh, which of course is the, the bird. Um, and um, I think it's a, it's a good different name and, and recognizable. Uh, but especially in, in, in our name, um, green, um, integrated and efficient, I think is, is uh, the, the very important words um, to have, uh, besides indeed, as uh, Zhao already uh, mentioned, multimodal. So uh, we are targeting all disciplines of, of transport. And I think also to, to, to mention our project is really based on the logistics to the port, in the port and to the hinterland. Uh, and not um, directly related to the industry, which of course, especially also, also in Rotterdam, is a, is a very uh, large component and of course also part of the, the emissions. But our focus is really on the uh, transportation sector. And I want to start briefly with a um, an overview video, which may give a quite a good and compact um, um, uh, overview of the project. Our ports are crucial hubs in the flow of goods to and from Europe. Ships, river barges, trucks and trains are constantly in motion, moving containers to and from port cities day and night. The port is the start and end point of the European supply chain. The European Commission sees this as a huge opportunity to accelerate the green transition of the transport sector. Ports can become decisive when it comes to the supply and use of green energy carriers. In the Magpie project, four ports and 41 other partners from six different countries have united to investigate how this role in the energy transition can best be shaped. The research focuses on four green energy carriers, hydrogen, batteries, ammonia, and biofuels. Their effect on the various modes of transport, the associated network of refueling and charging stations, the market, and legislation. Ten demonstrations and three tools will be developed under this ambitious research and innovation project. Alternative fuels, energy efficiency and renewable electricity in ports will be improved thanks to on-site biofuel production, ammonia bunkering to seagoing vessels, the use of smart energy systems, shore power peak shaving and the development of digital tools. 
maritime operations will become safer and more sustainable thanks to the deployment of offshore charging buoys, autonomous e-barges and automated cargo transshipment, and hydrogen and electric power for barges. More than ever, the port and its hinterland will be strongly interconnected through hybrid locomotives for in-port shunting operations. The electrification of trucks by central truck decoupling and autonomous charging and digitally connected trucks which prevent bottlenecks. Based on the demonstrated solutions and results, the Magpie partners will develop a master plan for the transition to green ports in Europe. We'll take into account the different types, sizes and geographical locations. The Magpie Consortium will build the smart green port of the future. So there was a, a brief introduction of the uh, the, the project. Um, uh, I think indeed uh, highlighting the, the 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 45 partners and then quite a a sizable scope. Uh, so actually, we really touch on every modality, um, every uh, uh, energy carrier, um, uh, renewable energy, and indeed uh, the efficiency, uh, which which comes back in the uh, uh, mainly digitalization uh, digital solutions uh, that we are working on. Um, the consortium uh, consists of 45 partners, uh, and as the EU um, uh, put in their request, uh, it's organized around four ports, um, three um, deep sea ports, and uh, one inland port uh, was the, um, uh, the request from the EU. Uh, luckily, we also um, uh, are joined by Haropa, which actually is a deep sea port, including inland ports, uh, Rouen and, uh, and Paris, so I think we have a quite good spread and um, uh, can also really work on, uh, on impact. Nine research institutions and universities are connected to our project and uh, 32 companies uh, and branch organizations uh, will, uh, spread over, over Europe. And here there is a small view on the distribution and then one of our challenges also with, with preparing the proposal of course is for Rotterdam uh, was required to be the, um, the demonstration port and thereby also, yeah, it, it's unavoidable to, to have uh, a lot of Dutch uh, companies represented. Uh, but luckily, we we found a quite good spread, of course, also with our partners in, in France, Germany, and uh, and Portugal. Um, also mentioned in the, the previous slides, um, in the new introduction, uh, we received a 25 million uh, grant from the EU, which of course is is, is funded, and yeah, we're over 30 million of, of uh, project cost in total. Uh, duration 60 months. We are now one, 12 months, one year on the way. Uh, so four years uh, to go. And our focus is indeed on the uh, energy carriers, electrical hydrogen, ammonia, and biofuels, uh, combined with increasing the efficiency in the port uh, by, by, by dig digital solutions. Um, and we have a fast uh, network created of stakeholders and interested parties. Uh, in Europe, but also uh, more specific in, in uh, globally. Um, we really have uh, generated quite quite an interest um, and also constantly working in to disseminate the, uh, the, the project uh, to as much as possible uh, parties. Then briefly the main goal, I think uh, part indeed we want to demonstrate solutions and prove uh, that they will will work. Uh, the TRL level uh, required by the EU uh, is, is, is quite high. So it's really demonstrating solutions real life. Um, like in, in the middle, you see the picture of a uh, e-charging buoy. Uh, so we did already some um, uh, scale testing um, uh, at this moment, but we will develop a full scale buoy that will be um, outside uh, of the port of Rotterdam uh, and be, be simulated in, um, in a testing environment. Uh, and for example, the other picture um, uh, is a, a bunkering of ammonia. Of course, currently st uh, still done with LNG, but uh, we are uh, working towards really uh, having a bunker demonstration in the portal of them uh, with ammonia. Then maybe a little bit on the on the concept, because there's a lot of topics uh, that we are addressing with with ten demonstrations and four tools to develop. So um, uh, the targets or the requirements were set by the, the EU, 
uh, to develop a um, uh, yeah, sustainable port with uh, zero emission in 2050. Uh, so that, that's what we're working on. That's also where the uh, research uh, topics and, uh, and demonstrations uh, are geared to. Uh, and of course, uh, the drivers is the, the energy transition, the increased digitizations all around the world, uh, work on automation and uh, artificial intelligence, for example, we're looking into a demonstration of um, 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 uh, sailing with uh, uh, with the autonomous barge in the port, uh, electrical slash hydrogen uh, powered, um, and putting that in the, into to, to, to the study. This all comes together. I think the main challenge also what you see here is the um, uh, the total integration of all these elements. Uh, that that really is a big challenge to connect all the developments and also to determine what is the best solutions and how, how to go forward and how to uh, be really uh, clever about uh, uh, yeah, using the energy available, uh, especially when it, be, when it becomes uh, sustainable. On the Magpie uh, project uh, organization itself and um, uh, how we structured it, um, well, of course, there is a number of, of uh, general elements uh, with, with general management and communications um, and working also with, with other um, uh, funding uh, initiatives of green ports. Um, like the blue blocks uh, represent uh, the real topics that we are addressing, and these also include the, uh, the demonstrations that we run. So on energy, digital, and the other um, uh, differentiation is the, 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 the maritime waterways and the land transport. Um, we go to measure everything, of course, to uh, uh, to uh, to have the, uh, the to clarify the impact. Um, and finally, and that's actually the the, the end uh, goal of the project is to develop a master plan, including a roadmap, which will um, uh, contain all the solutions that we are developing and how they can implement it also for other ports. Uh, this into a full master plan roadmap towards 2050. Um, so that there is a um, uh, a real way into how to are we going to um, green the ports uh, to the future. And lastly, to go very quickly on what we're going to do. So our demonstrations are around biofuels, smart energy system, uh, peak power safe saving on uh, onshore power, um, ammonia bunkering, uh, offshore charging, um, uh, electrical. Uh, autonomous shipping. What you mentioned by Zhao, uh, indeed the hybrid shunting locomotive, green connected trucking. So that's electrical trucks uh, will be decoupled in the in, in the port and, and further used. Uh, spreading of road traffic, a digital solution, greenhouse gas. So measurements of, of uh, gas emissions, um, uh, the energy matching, of course, very important to be uh, working efficiently with the energy sources that we have available. Um, and also looking at the logistics to uh, to really get them smart and, and green. Um, and Magpie uh, is set up as a living lab, so we constantly will try to uh, develop and increase and to learn from our experience and, and uh, build upon that. Then maybe to, because it's this is a very brief presentation, uh, we have uh, a, a website set up. Uh, but also we um, uh, have created a interactive map. Currently we are uh, developing and go forward, uh, but are not uh, that far yet. We're going to populate this more and more with information. But if you go to the website, this is actually an interactive map uh, where you can go to uh, the various um, elements. And I see that it is not coming up. No, sorry. Uh, it's trying to demonstrate this, but it's uh, not showing up on the screen, I'm, uh, I'm afraid. Uh, but actually, this um, uh, interactive app is available. Uh, it's clickable, uh, and under each uh, tab, there is the information of the various demonstrations. And we'll, uh, as we go along and uh, we'll generate results, uh, we will fill this up with, uh, with as much possible information to share with, uh, uh, with the whole port community and, uh, of course, with everyone uh, interested in. Uh, in these developments. Sorry, um, my something went wrong in the. Oh. 
and this is the last slide. Uh, of course, we have 45 partners. Um, uh, and as also mentioned by, by Zhao, uh, it's, I think it's very interested environment to work with so many parties and partners. And I think that's also uh, due to, of course, the, the, the port environment uh, and everything coming together. Um, uh, we really, uh, it's a very good uh, corporations and all the parts really contribute uh, to this. this that's, uh, that's a tremendous experience. Um, and I really also invite everybody interested in uh, the Magpie project and, and what we are developing uh, to contact us uh, via our website uh, and to uh, to learn and to see how these developments will uh, will uh, grow over the next uh, uh, next still four years to come. Thank you. This was. Thanks, I am. Thanks, thanks so much for your for your presentation and for allowing us to understand the, the different developments that are being made on the Magpie project. Of course, the project to still we was one year started one year ago, so the, the developments are, are still still beginning. But the let's say the ambition is high on this project for sure. And now let me share again, again my screen to present the next topic. So we will have let me okay is when let me put it here in full screen. Okay, so now uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we we will have uh, the a project that has this interlink through the swappable container water bond transport system with the Magpie project. And this project is current direct. We have here today Sean White, the project manager of uh, of the current direct project current direct project he's he's a senior project manager manager at spear power systems and has an extensive work in the maritime industry sean has a proven track record in delivering projects with significant technical challenges and financial responsibility across industry academia and regulators sean thank you thank you so much for being present today the floor is yours you, you can you can share your slides and move forward with your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for the introduction as well. Hopefully you can see my slides. Not yet. Yeah, now we can okay, see. Excellent. So again, thank you for this opportunity. I'm really pleased to be with you and um, really pleased to be on the same roster as such a innovative project as magpie i think that's going to be an excellent one to to track and watch so welcome to the current direct project so as mentioned my name is sean white and i'm the technical project manager and current direct is a, a horizon 2020 funded project and i will use this time together to introduce you to the project and also hopefully explain how we intend to support green ports of the future and contribute to a greener waterborne transport sector through our swappable container waterborne transport battery. So the current direct project is in response to the call to action to reduce the cost of large batteries for waterborne transport. Um, across the maritime industry, as already been said, there's a, an agreement that shipping must undergo a rapid energy transition over the current decade to prepare for and to start on the decarbonisation pathway. And honestly, today, I think we stand at the beginning of that transformation of waterborne transport into a true net zero emission mode of transport through the demonstration of deployable and sustainable zero emission solutions for all ship types. So the overarching aim of, of Current Direct and our mission is to develop and to demonstrate our innovative interchangeable waterborne transport battery system operating on, as has been said, an energy as a service platform. And we intend to do this in an operational environment that facilitates fast swapping, optimized container shore charging and novel business models. So in a nutshell, current direct will significantly reduce the total lifetime cost of waterborne transport batteries. We will seek to cut greenhouse gas emissions of the maritime transport sector through electrification of existing vessels and new builds. We will increase significantly the installed energy of containerized energy storage systems compared to currently available solutions. 
And our hope and our aspiration is that we will trigger investment for innovation, employment and knowledge creation in Europe for the maritime transport sector and battery sectors. So the implementation of the current direct project will, we hope, substantially reduce the cost of today's energy storage systems to be at cost competitiveness with conventional fuels while simultaneously increasing performance and market confidence. This, we hope, will considerably accelerate market adoption of zero emission technology. Current Direct will achieve this through the realization of eight strategic goals. The first is to develop a waterborne transport cell specifically designed for the needs of maritime transportation. The second is to develop a certified waterborne transport battery system, as mentioned, that doubles the installed energy of current best in class maritime battery systems. Thirdly, we will develop a certified integration standard between the swappable battery system and a wide range of vessel energy and power management systems. Fourth, we will develop a standardised port shore infrastructure solution, which is required to support the swapping and charging operation of the battery system. We will develop a novel energy as a service business and financing model that incorporates cloud-based dynamic pricing, remote battery analytics and fleet optimization. We will develop a marine battery certification methodology that validates the safety and risk assessments, along with establishing standardized test methodology for the industry. As mentioned, we will prove all of this ecosystem on a demonstrator vessel in the port of Amsterdam in the second half of 2023. And this will bring together all the various components of the project in a live demonstrator to prove the technology readiness. And finally, as part of today's session, we will seek to disseminate and communicate to an international audience the project results. We will engage with key stakeholders and we will participate in many uh, events over the life of the project to ensure we have good stakeholder engagement and input to the success of the project. The current direct consortium uh, and its advisory board has been carefully selected to develop and demonstrate the innovative technologies and business models. The diverse consortium incorporates 13 experienced and highly skilled organizations from nine different countries that provide best in class expertise and experience in the marine industry and across the battery manufacturing sector. Additionally, we've been very successful in securing strong presence on our advisory board, including large corporations like Carnival, the Port of Rotterdam, Vattenfall, Angie, Sogerstrand Group, and industry associations like the IVR Association. And we're adding more uh, advisory board members all the time as we disseminate the project and gather more interest in the results and the exploitation opportunities. So if we turn to the detail, the current direct project will develop and demonstrate our swappable container solution. And if we look at our cycle here, what we can see is that when an electric vessel arrives at a container swapping station in a port, instead of connecting to a shore charging infrastructure, the battery swapping operation swaps the discharge container battery with one that has been optimally charged in advance. The loaded charge battery provides the battery to vessel power and energy for the onward journey. And the offloaded battery can be charged according to the utility provider planning and price schedule. The battery swap swapping operation is completed within a very short time period. And this really allows for a quick onward departure of the vessel, which we know is so important to end users, particularly in the inland waterway market. After each container swapping operation, our energy as a service platform calculates the service fee that is to be paid by the end user. And this is assembled by a predetermined fixed fee and a specific battery to vessel operating cost. Taking a moment to look at our container. So our container will be capable of providing up to one megawatt of instantaneous power and will provide a total installed energy of three megawatt hours minimum. 
This amount of swappable clean energy is sufficient to enable zero emission operations of many applicable inland waterway and coastal shipping vessels for voyages we anticipate of tens of hours over hundreds of kilometers. Current Direct will deliver this innovation through the energy storage at the cell, pack and system integration and operational levels. And to give you some context, this will represent an increase of installed energy of over 300% compared to currently available systems, whilst significantly reducing the total lifetime cost of waterborne transport batteries by, we hope, up to 50% when compared to today's state of the art. To facilitate the physical operation of the current direct project, port shoreside container swapping and charging infrastructure will be developed. A swapping infrastructure capable of supporting a diverse range of vessel types used in the inland waterway and coastal shipping markets will be strategically placed along high traffic routes and multi-modal logistics and transport hubs. The swapping system will be scalable by design to accommodate the growth we expect in the electrification of vessels, whilst also supporting fast swapping and intelligent integration with the shoreside charging systems. The battery container will also be designed to include standardization on all electrical, mechanical and physical interfaces between the shoreside and the vessel side. This will be achieved through a detailed evaluation of the different target vessel types, system topologies and interfaces, along with port shoreside standards and regulations. And finally, for this slide, Current Direct will collect and analyse the state of the art maritime industry rules, regulations and requirements to identify a set of standard design procedures, verification and validation activities and testing and acceptance criteria that cover the entire scope of swappable battery container systems. I can turn now to our energy as a service platform, and this really is a revolutionary sharing economy business model operating on a cloud based platform, providing and enabling swappable battery containers to waterborne transport. The cloud based energy as a service platform, we hope will pave the way for sustainable battery swapping business model. And our mantra is that we will always provide the end user with the clean energy needed when they need it at a competitive price comparable to today's business as usual scenarios. The energy as a service digital platform is not only an enabler for quick pace adoption of electrified vessels, but also allows profitable collaborative opportunities among interested stakeholders. The platform enables the vessel and port owners to avoid that high capex costs on battery and shore infrastructure equipment through leasing and investment opportunities through government, banking or private institutional investors. This will not only address the rising demand of maritime electrification and battery energy storage systems, but it'll also provide various battery manufacturers an untapped market opportunity. In the future, the platform can even evolve from being a battery system solution to an energy source agnostic. So for example, containerized fuel cells. We are also investigating the opportunity for the platform to provide port grid service revenue options, such as energy arbitrage, demand response, and more, which will not only offer additional revenue options to the ports and the battery service providers, but also secure the support and secure a stable grid power for ports and utility providers. So compared to conventional shore power connections, um, we hope that current direct and our swappable solution will provide greater flexibility to port operators in terms of their grid management and charging optimization. This is really possible given that we've explained the task of swapping a battery is decoupled from the task of charging a battery. Swapping relates directly to the time the vessel will need to be moored at the berth for the replacement of the batteries on board the vessel. And as explained, this will be significantly lower given that it will make use of a container that has already been optimally charged. The independent charging will be carried out in a much more flexible manner, enabling slow charging with the advantages of increased battery life 
and lower investment on port grid infrastructure. Additional smart charging will be possible, decreasing grid congestion through peak shaving and load control. The shoreside charging systems will intelligently integrate with the local power grid to maximise the benefits, tapping batteries enabling potential to offer battery to grid services with the aim to provide grid stability for increasing renewable power production. The current direct project is investigating and evaluating this potential and engaging with port operators and utility providers to consider the demand for bidirectional power flow and battery to grid capability. So to support future commercialization, so beyond the life of the three year project, we are also uh, completing a profound study of EU inland waterway network and existing port infrastructure capability. So this study has sought to identify the most suitable locations that we would seek to roll out a battery container swapping solution and also the charging infrastructure across all of those selected EU inland waterways. The study has revealed that those locations that delineate the highest potential to install shore swapping infrastructure and charging infrastructure defined on various KPIs, such as accessibility from the water side, from both land and water, currently available space and usage of the site, and also importantly, the connection to the existing port infrastructure and likely required investment needed to upgrade. The analysis also factors the vessel traffic and strategic importance, as well as already available infrastructure. The study has assessed the future charging infrastructure for both short, medium and long term and considers different market sensitivities. The geographies and locations most suitable for the vessel charging network has provided valuable inputs for the assessment of the marine transport market, as well as our roadmap for commercialization. So finally, the current direct demonstrator we aim to validate through our operational environment in the port of Amsterdam in the second half of 2023. This will prove the concept of fast container swapping, connection and charging at the port, fleet optimization and our novel business and investment models enabled through our energy as a service. The demonstrator site will be located to make use of existing port infrastructure already in place, such as cranes, grid connections, and we will invest in shore charging infrastructure to enable the current direct demonstration. A purpose-built modular vessel operated and owned by our project partner Kotug will showcase and assess the full potential of current direct, including demonstration of zero emission operations, container swapping operations, container optimal charging from the grid, and also if possible, battery to grid services. Throughout the demonstration phase, we are working to collaborate with other swappable solution providers, such as zero emission services who are involved in the Magpie project, to ensure the technology and concept can be widely adopted throughout the maritime industry. So I really hope this presentation has given everybody a taste of the opportunities the current direct project will bring to the maritime market. I would like to thank you all for listening and also the EDP organisers for the opportunity to share this exciting innovative project. We would certainly welcome discussion with port owners and operators, grid utility providers and logistics providers who would like to be part of the electric revolution for inland waterway and coastal shipping. Thank you, Zhao. Back to you. Thank you so much, Sean. And um, thanks for, for the insights. Uh, really interesting, the current direct project. Um, now let's move on uh, to the Q&A. We do not have so much time, uh, so maybe I, I will I will first let me share here again the, the screen and maybe then I would propose for going directly. I have here some questions also during during the presentation. I some questions came up to my mind, but maybe we we should we should give priority here to our to our attendees and to our audience which already posed some question so maybe let me here start for a question from Rui Viegas Cardoso um, he asks if the battery systems will be class approved namely for inland and seagoing vessels so i think this is probably more for you Sean do we want to to address this one 
Absolutely. So it's a very good question. So we know that there are differences between seagoing vessel classification requirements with rule and differences with inland waterway vessels that typically operate within the boundaries of uh, CESNI ES Trin. So one of the activities we have completed is the evaluation across both seagoing and inland waterway vessels, the standards and requirements that dictate battery safety, battery testing, um, and we've developed a harmonised rule set that we believe could be relevant to the industry to ensure a level playing field, particularly on inland waterway where there is more scope to use uh, non-maritime tested and certified batteries. So that is a public deliverable, will be available for dissemination very soon once approved by the Commission. Um, suffice to say that we will comply with all relevant rules and regulations in force as of the day. We know that ES Trin is currently working on a revision, uh, which we expect in 2025, which will outset more rules and requirements on battery powered vessels, given the rise in this technology. I hope that answers the question. I think I think so, Sean. Thanks. Hayat, of course, if you want to, to add something, please go ahead. I directed oriented this more to, to, to Sean, since I think he's more related with, with the current direct, but of course, please feel free to, to add something if you think it's necessary. Mm, yes, no. maybe very quickly, uh, maybe from, from just from my experience, uh, we started off with indeed, and these are indeed uh, maritime suitable containers uh, developed for the, the inland shipping and the the maritime industry uh, and we started to consider them to use them for uh, 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 peak shaving or for the show power uh, there actually we're running into well is exactly does it make sense because of course there are uh, relatively expensive uh, uh, parts of, uh, of equipment um, so we actually had a very interesting discussion internally in our project like if you start talking about swappable containers if you are also then maybe swap them for other uses uh, so it's uh, we have to come back to that on on what actually the conclusion is on within our project but just wanted to share that with you uh, and that actually that's that was one of the, the questions that was raised and we we're working on thanks I, thanks for adding this i i, I will stick here with uh, Rui Viegas Cardoso because I, I think he is also posted uh, an additional question still uh, on the battery side so he is asking if due to due to the size of the swapping stations, if any retrofit kits for in, inland vessels are being studied, namely passenger inland vessels. Do you want to take this one, Sean? You can certainly um, take that to start with. So again, if we look at some of the um, challenges we knew we would face with this type of technology, it was how do you um, retrofit it um, onto an existing vessel, given that a large proportion of the inland fleet um, would not necessarily be scrapped in favour of going for a zero emission new build. So we have a naval architect partner called Forship who has conducted two studies on the project. One was to characterise the inland vessel fleet and we um, were able to access the IVR association database, so over 12,000 vessels. And using the data in that database, we were able to look at things like powering requirements, size requirements, stability requirements, and, and dead weight requirements to, to look at where the container could be applied. So we, we filtered that database down, and we think the technology has an applicable scale somewhere in the region of six to 8,000 vessels. Um, just in terms of those basic filtering parameters. The next phase of that study is to look at, OK, what type of work is needed on those vessels for a retrofit case to a remove a combustion engine, reconfigure the machinery space and allow space for the number of containers required for the typical journeys that we see on the inland network. It's a big challenge because therefore there is a lot of cost associated with retrofitting a vessel. Uh, and we believe there will be a cutoff in vessel age where it is more uh, economical to scrap the vessel than to retrofit. Conversely, we see with our engagement with the industry, a lot of new build vessels built on the modular concept design. So modularity in energy carrier, be that a containerized battery or a containerized fuel cell or even a containerized fuel tank. Um, there's some great projects ongoing that we're working with to to try and influence the standardization of things like electrical connectors. Um, obviously, using a standard ISO container is, is one of the starting points. Um, so it is a big 
marine engineering challenge. I think there's a lot of potential work there to go after. Um, we are also looking at the financing mechanisms. Yeah, how can we support owners with the retrofit or the new build business case justification? Uh, and that will all be wrapped up in our business modeling and financial studies that we will commence later this year going into next year as we ready ourselves for commercialization. Ayer, do you want to add something in here? OK, so I would, I would move on. Thanks, thanks, Sean, for, for the clarification. I think it was very clear. Um, now I would I would pose here a question made by Pedro Gonçalves. Um, he is uh, he's trying to compare different potential solutions here for the for the barges and for the inland shipping. Uh, he says that the solution of replaceable batteries is quite interesting, uh, but um, of course that in this case the the destination ports will also need to be prepared to charge these batteries. Um, and he's saying if green hydrogen, um, in his opinion, green hydrogen seems a better solution uh, as ships could generate the energy required on board to reach the destination port. Um, what are your thoughts on, on this potential solution of using green hydrogen and generating the green, the green hydrogen on board? Fire, maybe you could yep. start. Um, yes, indeed. Uh, as, as we. Um... FD, of course, uh, working uh, together with the, the, the ZES company, uh, which is, of course, working on the uh, the, the battery concept uh, solution. Um, we will use that for our demonstration for uh, autonomous shipping. Uh, but another demonstration that we have in our project is indeed uh, to uh, go for the next step, indeed to um, uh, to investigate and to uh, try to demonstrate indeed a hydrogen uh, a container uh, that already has been, uh, been proving a bit challenging. It's, it's not as, uh, as as easy and as uh, straightforward as a, a battery container. But that's indeed something that we, we are working on, and especially, of course, on the, the longer distances that could po potentially be uh, another solution as, of course, the, 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 the battery has only a, a certain time, or you have to, um, uh, to load a number of uh, battery containers on the vessel, but of course, that starts to conflict with the uh, transport capabilities and, of course, the, the cost to transport a uh, non-profitable uh, container on the on the vessel. Um, so yes, we are we are working on this, um, uh, but especially also we've seen that there's no solution yet uh, clarified of where electrical or hydrogen or uh, biofuels, for example. Uh, uh, would be best uh, applied and uh, what the best results is there. There's, I think it's still an open field, so uh, all solutions should be uh, investigated and worked out uh, and, and thereby indeed uh, conclude on, on what the best solutions will be in the towards the future. Sean, what about you? You also think that this, this is an open field where several different possibilities uh, should be should be addressed first and then let's see what is what is let's say the best one what do you think so look i think you know we all know that there are many competing alternative fuels or even technologies um one thing we all know is that they need infrastructure um port side infrastructure to work whether that's charging a battery or bunkering uh, a fuel or even generating a fuel um, you know, on our project, we know that a battery solution is a transition to enable some of these ships because of our high technology readiness and our ability to uh, deploy, you know, at scale quite quickly compared to the infrastructure that would be needed long term for an alternative fuel. Now, you know, we know that most fuel cell powered ships have a battery requirement because fuel cells have an Achilles heel at low load. So we always see a future for batteries, even when we see uh, alternative fuels probably taking more market share. Certainly the modeling we've seen coming out of the CCNR for the inland fleet is that they see a market share, you know, anywhere up to 10% for swappable batteries. Yeah, which is still a decent market, um, but they also recognize that that technology is ready to go now, uh, as opposed to some of the other alternative fuels that still will take a lot longer to come through. LNG is a great example of how long it has taken that fuel to even get a foothold in the market and how quickly that's now being transitioned out of because it was not necessarily a true green fuel. Um, so yeah, we, we, we see a, a definite 
uh, application for swappable batteries. Is it the long term solution? No, but will it get us to meet some of our targets that are coming up very soon? Yes. Thanks, thanks, Sean. Very clarifying. And it is, in fact, the interesting that this technology of swappable batteries can be, let's say, deployed in the, in the short term. Um, I would now go, we have just a few minutes, but I would know how we, we focus on more technical uh, questions. I'll go now for more generic ones that we also have in here. Uh, Christoph Vincent is asking if it is possible to transform a standard vessel into an electric one or if there is a need to a complete renew of the fleet. But I can take a, take a stab at that. So, you know, if you look in the industry now, <clears throat> there are already conversion projects happening. Um, there are already conversion projects taking conventionally powered vessels and moving them through to an electric drivetrain uh, with various solutions for the powering. So. The project that uh, Rhea referenced, um, you know, is already running on an electric swappable battery. It's it's there. It's being proven. Um, the Mars vessel went into refit a few weeks ago to get ready for running on hydrogen. So this is happening as a retrofit solution. We know that the inland fleet is old, um, you know, but those vessels are well taken care of by their owners. Um, I think it really needs to be looked through the lens of the economic. Um, business modeling as to whether it's it's more economical to scrap a fleet or a number of vessels and rebuild or whether to retrofit. Um, you know, and given the capacity limitation we have in some European yards, the new build will not always be the cheapest option or even the quickest option. Um, we just won't be able to build the vessels quick enough. Thanks, Sean. I think Hyatt will will agree with you on that one. So I will I will go to to, to another question that we have here, specifically regarding the by this one higher, uh, Umberto Queiroz is asking if why not considering energy of waves for powering the ports? What do you think about that, that solution? Sorry, Joe, can you, is, did I understand correct? Energy of uh, waste? Waves, waves. Oh, waves? Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's um... Maybe indeed there there there's were different components were also in the, the the request for the proposal. But I think we we are much more focusing indeed on the um, the uses of the energy sources, so uh, electrical charge, and of course uh, waves are part of these uh, emission free generation of, uh, of 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 energy. Um, so actually we assume uh, that's why there of course uh, we have uh, solar power, wind power. Uh, we consider that as being our Green source into the energy sources that we're going to apply for the uh, the powering up the logistics, so to say. So we are less focused on the energy generation, uh, although very interesting. And I know that uh, our partner uh, consortium uh, around organized around Antwerp, together with Barcelona, Venlo, and Constanza, are more focused also on the energy uh, production, the green energy production. Um, we. Uh, we have a focus on um, really the, the 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 modalities and the the what the energy the modalities are using rather than the energy uh, generation. Thanks, Ian. I would now ask Ineos uh, and Anna: Do we still have some minutes, or what do you think? Uh, maybe let's not pass, uh, for example, uh, 6.10, but I think we can go until then. It's not okay. too much. <laughs> OK, thank you. So uh, I will take this opportunity also to pose to pose a question that came up to my mind while while Sean was presenting. Uh, at some point, you were also comparing the swappable batteries technology with onshore power supply. And my question is, um, do you think they are, let's say, true competitors or do you think there is field for both uh, for different kinds of uh, not transport, but let's say operational modes of, of the transport? What do you think about this? It's a good question and a, and a really good observation. You know, we have been quite clear on our target market inland waterway. You know, we need to be realistic about what's size of vessel could be powered through swappable batteries you know clearly this isn't suitable for a deep sea going vessel where the number of batteries would really eat into the cargo carrying space which starts to erode uh, margin so with the inland market you know we we really are um 
focused on that space where the number and there was another question I saw earlier how many containers which again is a fantastic question you know it really depends on on the journey how frequent the skipper is willing to swap uh, we don't want to be an inconvenience you know we all have thought about buying an electric car I'm sure and then got range anxiety you know can I go and do that trip I wanted to do without having to charge three four times on the journey it's exactly the same in the inland market um, so yeah, finding that spot where we think we can be credible and offer a real alternative, and beyond that, it, it clearly is short charging. You know, a cruise ship, for example, it, it absolutely makes sense to connect to a shore power connection uh, that's dedicated. Um, so we've also looked at coastal shipping, and that's a really interesting area because coastal shipping, whilst there is a lot of predictable routes like ferries going from uh, port to port and back, a lot of coastal shipping can take on quite a varied pattern. That becomes problematic for swappable batteries because A, where do you end up with the batteries dotted around the Mediterranean? And B, the weather conditions can be so variable. So again, we're refining constantly our understanding of the target market for this. Um, but you make a really good point. I think the two are complementary competitors where, you know, you could even have a scenario where you could charge the container on the vessel if for any reason the infrastructure or the port operator would prefer to do it that way. You know, we see some vessels that have no nighttime operations. You know, they will sit there from six o'clock in the evening till six o'clock in the morning. You know, that's as good as taking the container off the vessel in some cases. Um, so yeah, it's uh, complementary competitors, I would suggest, yeah. But good question, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Sean. Jair, do you want to add something? Yes, I, I think, uh, of course, still, still um, this will further develop, and we also have seen, indeed, for the, uh, the, the, the peak shape for the shore power, um, that there are so many applications, and uh, maybe not all, like, for example, full-time. Uh, we actually have a, a test site with the, the, the Herma, uh, lifting cranes. So there are big cranes that are coming in irregularly for 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 maintenance in the port. So you don't need to have all the time the container. So swappable containers is 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 already a very interesting part. Uh, actually, one of the comments that were made uh, by the the opening of or the the, the presentation of the the shore power for Hirma uh, was actually that they should have included this already from the beginning, uh, the peak shaving. So I think that was. Mm. Uh, a good good learning. Um, so I, I think this will develop, and I think that's also why we develop smart systems, uh, because to generate insights, the usage, uh, the needs, if you have the information uh, on that, you can actually make smart decisions on where to deploy, uh, what makes sense, and, and uh, how you most efficiently uh, deploy whatever resources you have. So I think that's a, it's a good combination that we see. Uh, although it's of course now linking all the dots together, which which will be a, a huge challenge in the the whole project and, and well, in general the all the development. Thanks, Hi. I think now I can pose a, a question that is a little bit different from what we discussed until now. Um, we are discussing here different technologies, different energy vectors, uh, and we are discussing this transition happening on the ports. Uh, but the port authority, let's say, do not have uh, do not have the means to by itself completely uh, ensure that this transition will happen. It depends on regulation. It depends on governments. It depends on the stakeholders that coexist on the port. Um, what do you think should be the real role of ports? Uh, a more active role that pushes uh, the stakeholders to 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 make this transition. A more massive role that it will depend on, let's say, the willingness or or the um, yeah the willingness of the different stakeholders. What what do you think? Maybe you can start, Trier, since you are here a representative of of a port. Yes, I, I think definitely we have a a role and a task and a responsibility to um, to initiate to um, um, to invest in indeed. Um, uh, Creating the opportunities, uh, the environment, and possibly need also the conditions. Uh, together, for example, also we were very close with the municipality of Rotterdam and with the Dutch government uh, into making this feasible and to to create the best conditions uh, for also private companies and and uh, uh, research institutes to to develop these solutions. Um, 
I think even also within our strategy, we, we concluded that uh, we need to do actually more actually to um, to really uh, yeah, uh, cooperate and initiate all these 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 changes um, to really be, yeah, be able to to make a change. Of course, there there are limitations to it to to, to the role uh, to the to the investment capabilities. Uh, but yes, I would see that more definitely um, required to take an active role in um, uh, these kind of developments together, of course, with all the other partners. Thanks, Faye. Let me let me now go back a little bit here to to our to our audience because we have here two I think two additional questions and we can close with these two. Going back to 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 the batteries uh, technical part, um, and this can can start also Sean. How many batteries would be needed to power a typical container ship? I think you mentioned uh, this question uh, previously. Uh, does it make sense from the viewpoint of energy weights? to power the vessels, to power vessels from batteries? Yeah, and that is the, the question we come up with the most. So, you know, we <clears throat> there's no typical vessel um, and there's no typical route, but we have predictable routes. Um, nominally, most vessels um, require more than two or three containers. There are very few vessels that can operate on one, and there's some regulatory rules that um, limit what you can do with one container. Um, but you know, if you were to go to our website, we have something called the Voyage Energy Planner, and this gives vessel owners an indication of given some basic vessel parameters like the length, the breadth, uh, the powering, um, and the journey that they're interested in, how many containers they could be looking at. Now, well, clearly that's not optimized. That's not an optimized solution. That's just based on some very simple parameters that most vessel owners have to their hands today. And so we've been helping vessel owners understand, OK, you know, what does this look like? Do you go big on the number of containers and reduce the number of swaps? Or do you go smaller, medium on the number of containers and possibly increase the number of swaps? And we play that game depending on the route and how often the vessel is prepared to stop and swap. And given what other activities the vessel may be doing uh, on its activity, you know, is it a multi-drop and a multi-pickup route? Um, so I don't have a, a, there's no silver bullet answer, but we have tools and we are developing tools to analyze routes, to analyze vessel profiles. And we're harvesting a lot of data from um, marine traffic websites at the moment to try and characterize the fleet. So, you know, in the future, I may have a better answer for that, um, but I, I think it will always be a, a kind of, yeah, really depends what the vessel owner is willing to do with their route uh, as to how many containers they need on their ship. Yeah, for sure. I, I agree with your point, uh, Sean. Let me, we are almost, we are, are overcoming the 10 minutes that Ines and Anna provided to us. So I will put the last question that I have here. Rui Viegas Cardoso asked if short to ship DC to AC connection from batteries to existing conventional main switchboard is possible. Sean, do you want to take this one? More related with the batteries part. Yeah, absolutely, it's possible. So ship shore to ship, um, you know, it's done. You know, we already have onshore power supplies powering ships um, ranging from you know, 440 volts up to 11 kV for big cruise ships. You know, that's that's already done. Uh, is it a, a conventional switchboard? No, you know, it's a switchboard that's been specifically designed for that purpose. Does the vessel need to take consideration of that connection? Yes. Um, you know, I think the interesting thing is what we're trying to do with the swappable batteries, um, disconnect the need to have the vessel connected to the shore at all times. You know, allow the vessel to do what the vessel needs to do with loading and unloading cargo. And whilst that's all going on, swap a battery. You know, we all swap batteries in our our lives today. How many appliances in your home do you swap? And sometimes how inconvenient is it to have to find a charger? Um, so we're trying to you know, change the industry, change the perception, um, work with our partners to really make this a credible solution that uh, end users can really get behind. Thanks, John. So I think we we now need to close. I want just to thank you to both of you. Sean, hi, thank you so much for the presentations, for like for clarifying our doubts and questions. So now the floor, I will pass to Anna and to Ines to, to close the session. Thank you all and take to the entire audience.
thank you. And thank you, João, for taking care of these sessions. We have just reached the end of our event, so thank you all for your active participation. To finish, we just want to share with you that next month um, we will have another webinar with another topic related to the energy sector. Uh, spoiler alert, but this one might be related with data and data spaces. So stay tuned for that. And we're happy to invite you to continue to follow these webinar sessions powered by EDP New. Thank you all and enjoy your afternoon. Thank you. Bye bye.